This is Twit. Now, a while back, Google announced Google Advanced Protection Program, and we've gotten a lot of questions about here, about that on Twit because people are saying, "Oh, is this something new?" Not really. I mean, it is just multi-factor slash two-factor authentication. Mm -hmm. They've just gone the next logical step, and they've taken away some of the the uh, the outs. If you screw up with two-factor authentication, the standard two-factor authentication, there are ways you can get around that. Mm -hmm. With the advanced protection program, what they're doing is they're saying, look, we understand that some of you have accounts that are so important and tied to the services that, that will affect other people that you would rather be locked out of your account than someone else have access to it. Right. So that this is sort of coming, to, coming at it the other way. This is not from easy access to slightly more difficult access. This is, look, you have to do it right in order to get into this account. Yeah, it's almost like using just your password, that's the easy level. That's yep. the demo tutorial of life on the internet. Uh, Two-factor, multi-factor, that's like intermediate. You've been playing the game for a mm -hmm. while, you're good. Uh, this is expert. This, this is, is expert level. You don't yeah. touch this because it's crazy. It's yeah. craziness, and if you mess it up, uh, game over. And they actually, they released this with a specific audience in mind. And the audience was politicians and celebrities who mm -hmm. have had their accounts hacked. Been a little bit of that in the news <laughs> in the past. <laughs> a little bit of that in the news. Uh, yeah, like the Podesta emails, we found out that it's because, yeah. well, someone compromised his, uh, his Google services, got access to everything. Uh, that's also happened with Google Photos, with Google Drive. Right. So this is sort of a, a way to address that. Now, again, this is just multi-factor authentication, but it's what they do with that multi-factor authentication and what they allow that makes this different than what you were just talking about. The first thing is, this only protects Google services, which means, I'm sorry, but right now it is only available through the Chrome browser. You cannot do this through a different browser. Eventually, Edge may support uh, U2F, but not right now. Uh, also, this means that uh, data made accessible through apps will no longer be allowed. So I can't run a third party app that uses Google services. It's, it's just not allowed. Because, right. because what, what the worry about is, it doesn't matter what security they install on their side if the third party app which has access to that data is insecure. Yeah. So it's it's sort of like, well, if I lock down my hard drive but I give that one person access, if that one person is not trustworthy, then all the work I did to lock it down doesn't Yeah, matter. it's it's removing all external uh, weaknesses, external, you know, third party ways that something could possibly happen. This is, like we said, this is a nuclear option. So when yeah. you're doing this, it comes with a lot of restrictions. But what you get, which is of the utmost importance to you if you're doing this, is absolute security. Right. That's oh, and what you get. By the way, this also does not work on iOS. Uh, oh. So you can use it on Chrome on iOS, but any native apps, uh, not yet. Uh, hopefully that will that will come into the, into the future. Hmm. Now the process is super super simple. Uh, I, we've got a little tutorial that's going to come through, but essentially you go to the advanced protection page, uh, you click get started, and then you register two security keys. Now uh, I've done this, so I'm using these two keys right here. This is the uh, multi-pass. This is a FIDO security key. This is going to support USB, NFC, Bluetooth, LE. Uh, this is U2F certified. That's universal second factor. Are you logging into your account right now? Well, it's trying to. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this one. This is a Yubico or Yubikey FIDO. Ah, yes. Uh, this is about $25. This is about $18. You need two of these, at least two of these to, to kick this off. Oh, uh, wow. I'll explain that. But let's talk a little bit about U2F because wow. this is important. You have to understand how the technology works before you enable it, otherwise you might get frustrated. Now, uh, Universal Second Factor, or U2F, is something that was designed to use either USB or NFC. So you had to have contact with the device. Uh, it, it was supported by Chrome since version 38 and Opera since version 40. It works for Google, for Dropbox, for Facebook, for others. It's an open standard, so a lot of people have tried it. Now, Alex, if you go to the graphic, uh, this, this is how it works. So let's say you log into a service with a browser. So that's that middle line right there. You, you send your username and password to the server. The server then verifies that username and password and it generates a challenge. And a challenge is just a sequence of characters that it's gonna send back to the browser. And then the browser is gonna say, oh, I've been challenged. Hey, you insert your key or connect your key and respond to this challenge. Now, that key might be connected via USB, it might be connected via Bluetooth, it might be connected via NFC, but once I touch the button on that key, 
it will take the challenge, generate the proper response, send that response to the browser. The browser will then send that response to the server. The server will verify that that response was cor a correct answer to its challenge, and then it lets you in. Oh, Does that make that, sense? That makes sense. Yeah, when, when that uh, graph, that chart yeah, first came up, I was like, forth, oh, no. But no, that makes a whole lot of sense, and it's, it's uh, hopping through three different kind of points. Yes, a little bit of ping pong. So, so then, explain to me why two. Mm, Why that's do you a need good two? question. And you know what? I could answer that, or I could just Alex ask Alex to uh, push that magic button. Setting up GAP, or Google Advanced Protection, is actually pretty simple. You need two U2F, or Universal Second Factor, security keys. Why two? Because you're about to enable a security feature that will lock you out of your account if you misplace a key. You should have at least one backup. My first key is a multipass FIDO security key that works with USB, Bluetooth, and NFC, meaning that I can use it with my computer, tablet, or phone. The second device is a Ubico U2F key that only works on USB-equipped computers. Once you have your keys, go to Google's Advanced Protection site and click Get Started. As of the writing of this segment, this will only work on Chrome. After checking to make sure that you have security keys, you'll be asked to plug the first one into your computer. With the multipass device, I connected it via a micro USB cable. After the device has been properly installed, you can press the button on the device and GAP will register the ID of the security key. Repeat the process for the second key, in my case, a Yubico. Again, plug in the device when prompted, then allow the drivers to install and press the gold contact to answer the challenge. With the keys registered, you can now turn on advanced protection. Make sure not to lose your keys. You've just told Google that nobody, including you, should be able to access your Google accounts without these keys. When you want to log into a Google service, you provide your username and password. The Gap will then send a challenge to your browser, and the browser will prompt you to connect one of your keys and reply to the challenge, which will then be passed back to the server, which will then authenticate you. Now, this doesn't mean you'll need a key every time you access your account, as you can still ask Google to remember your device so it's not constantly asking for authentication. But any access from an unregistered device, including your phone, tablet, or a new laptop desktop, will require one of the keys. One last note. If you want to be just a little more secure, get into the habit of occasionally revoking trust from all devices. Just to make sure that you didn't accidentally grant access to a device that you've left in the wild. Now that last step, mm. I, would, I would suggest everyone take notice. Every once in a while, go into those settings and revoke all access. Just because, I mean, think about it. Yeah. You, you might have logged into a desktop and maybe you forgot to uncheck that, remember this computer. Just just go in there, and even if you recognize all the devices, it's it's a good practice to, to do that every once in a while. Force the, the flush and then re Register all your computers. Yeah, because that stuff stacks up quick. And you don't you don't really know it because in the moment you're just like, ah, I just need to get in there and you fire it off and then you forget about it. It's kind of like when you log into like Facebook or Twitter right. and you look right. at the connected apps mm -hmm. and you realize, oh wow, that's an app that uh, I you know used Oops. six years ago, right. like and I've never touched <laughs> since. But here, have a little bit of extra data of what you know what I'm doing and whatever they need it for. So. Yeah, you want to yeah. be sure of that. I have a question about this. Oh, sure. All right. So you showed that off. It makes a whole lot of sense. This, but, but Google made a big push on this a couple of months ago as, as this being the ultra-secure mm -hmm. solution. Mm -hmm. Yet they've always offered, or they've offered for a long time, the ability to access your account with an external hardware key. So what is the difference okay, so between what they used to offer and, and what the new push is? Right. Some of those keys were literally just storage devices that contained a really long hash on them. Uh, not secure. They, they made it so that you couldn't copy it off, so you couldn't just make duplicates of the key. But that wasn't really secure. These are different. So these are all, if you go to the overhead, these are all U2F, Universal Second, fa uh, second Factor Authentication Keys. Uh, the way that these are going to work is, is just like we showed them. When you plug them into your USB drive or connect via Bluetooth or NFC, and then you push the button, it's going to respond to a specific challenge. It's following a very specific set of, of uh, rules, a protocol set down by the U2F uh, guidelines. Got it. So that's what makes these more secure. This this key, you cannot duplicate this. There is uh, no other key on the market, uh, on the face of the planet, that will respond to the challenge the same way that this key will. 
uh, which is also why if you lose it, it's gone. So right. what I would suggest is don't just have two. Get a couple of these. I've, I've actually got like 20 of these Fidos, uh, all different sizes and shapes. They work exceptionally well. These are not too expensive. The, you know, you can get these down for $10 uh, if you if you get enough of them. Hmm. This is a bit more expensive, and the only reason for that is because it also does NFC and Bluetooth, because if you want to use uh, GAPP on your phone, you need a way to connect it. Yeah, you right. Can't, you're not going to uh, plug this into your phone, so... So this would be almost be your primary, because that gets right. into everything. This would be your secondary. Is like Precisely, yeah. This, like, closer to $30, I can plug it in via USB. I can plug it in via NFC just by tapping it. And if the phone doesn't have NFC, when you set up a new Google account, it will actually say, hey, I need a security key. Would you like me to turn on Bluetooth? Got you it. say yes, you hold the button for five seconds, it pairs automatically, and then it says, okay, I got the challenge, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. uh, now, remember, the first time you set this up, it's also going to start trusting those devices unless you specifically tell it not to. That, that's a default checkbox. Kind of don't like that. I wish it, it yeah. defaulted to not yeah. trusting the device. Uh, but let, let me show you how it works really quickly. So if you go to my computer, Alex, uh, this should work because I unauthenticated everything the other night. Uh, I, I'm using this in a... Um, an incognito browser because I don't want this logging in as, as me. I'm going to have it log in as our test account, which is called Owned How. <laughs> Get it? Because it's owned? Okay, never mind. All right, so uh, I got my standard username and password, and then it should do this. So it's telling me to plug it in. So, so I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. And Jason, yes. if you take a look, actually, let's, let's move this over here so people can take a look. Uh, can you see that? Uh, uh huh. Uh, there we go. Oh yeah. See, the, it's the starting blinky? to blink. The right. Go ahead and touch that gold contact. Okay. There you go. <gasps> and now go and back to my I computer. That, oh yeah, it there totally worked. That's so, awesome. That's okay. how that works. So it's like a touch. It's almost like a touch sensitive. Just touch sensitive. That's all it is. Oh. Uh, and like oh. for example, that same thing will also work on a Chromebook. Let me go ahead and disconnect this. And they need to like put fingerprint recognition in that little touchpad and an extra level security. They could, yeah, they could go. Then, <laughs> then it becomes three-factor authentication. I know. Right? It is something you know, something you have, and something. Yeah, you really? How are. far do we want to take this? <laughs> uh, we could take as it as far, far as, as you want. As yeah. far as you are willing to do it. Dang. Now for for Chrome, um, okay, are you getting this, Alex? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, hopefully, oh, you know what? It's probably mirroring. Okay, so we're not. Or even... it might not be passing it through because you're on your password page. Uh, oh well, let, actually, let's just go to the overhead instead. I'll, I'll open this up. Oop, wait, Ooh. The other way. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, there oh. we go. Ah, hey. ah. Okay, so all we have to do is we're going to go ahead and add a person. So this is all in the Google ecosystem, and I'm going to sign in as owned how. Owned who? Uh, that's a P, not an O. Uh, the, uh, that's how I spell because I'm super <laughs> late. <laughs> so when I do this, see, it's it's gone to the okay. Google server. It's like, oh, wait a minute. I'm going to need a, a little something, something extra. I could use either of these. If I wanted to use this, I could either enable the Bluetooth on the, the Chromebook or I could plug it in via a USB. In this case, I'm going to use the Yubico. Uh, where, where is that? It's on this side. There we go. Okay. And plugged it'll do in, a little blinky, 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 little tap, and hey, it's boom. working! It's working! Here we go. Synchronize with references, and, and I'm in. So this it doesn't actually nice. take that much more time, and it looks super simple. But remember, if you lose the keys, yeah. you're done. Are you ever uh, inclined to just leave it in the USB port? Um, I would always take it out and put it someplace where I would not forget it. Right. Um, and, and that's why I, I don't have just two keys. I've got uh, five. And one of them is, uh, the, so I carry two on me. One's going to be on my keychain, one's going to be inside my bag. Um, I have one in my office, I have one in my room, and then I have one that I keep in a safe, just, mm -hmm. just like you. Right, right. Uh, just because I, I want to know that even if everything goes wrong, I have at least one thing that will get me back in there, all the while protecting my account from accidentally getting access by someone who shouldn't right. have access. Right. And then if you lose that one, you can revoke that later? Uh, yeah. So you can revoke so any So you're key. out, you're about, oh my goodness, it's not in my pocket anymore. Get Precisely. to a terminal and revoke just that one or all, everything is start from No, I, I can ro revoke individual keys. Okay. So if I know which key was lost, I can say, hey, that one, no, don't trust right. it anymore. Yeah. Uh, and which even if someone finds do. my key, unless I put my name, yeah. username, and password on it. There's no identifiable <laughs> anything. Yeah. And if I were to do that, then someone should hit me on the head. <laughs> That's a bad idea. Because I'm a bad person. <laughs>